What are we really trying to do, Louie? So ultimately, we're really trying to Gary V the fuck out of Dealer Image Pro. Recently, after attending a Grand Cardone 10X Essentials workshop in Miami, one of the things we realized as a company is that Dealer Image Pro doesn't promote enough of its personality. Sure, we produce these comedic cowboy videos where we poke fun of ourselves and auto industry nuances. These videos are a hit. We get tons of great feedback, tons of business, and hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. We're professional photographers and videographers. We know how to tell a story, but we don't do it enough. So, welcome to the content party, ladies and gentlemen. We might f this up. But strap in while Louie and I do our very first car review on one of my favorite cars of all time, the legendary BMW E39 M5. BMW almost didn't make this car. What? They were pretty happy with the 540 and the V8 power that was in there. And until Mercedes-Benz came along with the E-Class AMG and Audi with its RS6, BMW sat quietly thinking they could get away with the V8 power from the 540. Please. My fate is in your lovely hands. And in 1998, they debuted the E39 M5 at the Geneva Motor Show, much to everybody's surprise. Yes! People loved it right off the rip. Not only was it an amazing looking car, but it handled superbly and it had V8 power. It put it at a zero to 64.8 seconds, which was the performance of a supercar at that time. I used to have an E39 540 automatic and I munched it and the insurance ended up totaling the car. The E39 540 would have satisfied my lust probably for E39s in general had I still had that car today. But I've also looked at these M5s for so long that I just wanted one and it felt so good to be able to search and search and search for just the right specimen and I believe I found it in this one. How long have you been looking for this particular car? My best friend, Keith, he shot our Cowboy Quinn video there for Dealer Image Pro. Him and I, we were in Avon, Connecticut, and the dry cleaner there, he has this car, this model, this blue, the whole thing sitting there for the world to see. And Keith and I, we could have been tripping on acid. I don't even remember. I just remember <laughs> looking at it and Keith like getting down on the ground and looking underneath it. And he's like, look at the rear end of that. <laughs> and I think it was that moment I fell in love with like the muscular back end and like the quiet, like contentness of like the design, but it was still sophisticated. And I mean, even today, this car, anyone that sees it, that doesn't know what it is. It's like, oh, that's a nice new car. And you're like, yeah. it's 22 years old. They're like, yeah. wait, what? When you want to drive this car nice and easy, it's all business. It's pretty amazing like that. But when you want to get aggressive and drive a little stronger, and the car just comes alive in sport mode, the throttle response is quicker, the steering gets a little tighter and you can feel it muscle up and get ready for battle. There's something about the E39 M5 that just blows me away. The feel, the thickness of the steering wheel, the steering wheel size, the turning radius, how it moves, how it slithers, the cup holders, the coin dispenser that holds like two bucks, and the six-speed gearbox. I just can't get enough of it. Got a lot of raft traffic here. These rafters are dropping in over here, and they'll be going down the lower fork of the American River. If you didn't know, El Dorado County is where all of these American rivers converge and go into Folsom Lake, and it is the whitewater capital of 
California. What exactly got you into taking pictures of cars? I was living in Japan for a year, and at that time I was doing a lot of video um, clips and things, a lot of Jackass stuff, because Jackass was really popular. Oh, before. right, yeah, I mean, but <laughs> I, my uh, friends are doing that in the middle. Yeah, like, we'd jump into the bushes and videotape it and like do the whole thing. My friend poured gasoline on himself no. and uh, lit himself on fire. No. And that guy, he had a mohawk, his name was Cody. Oh, my Cody God. That's War. some eerie Pennsylvania His right last there. name was War. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Literally W-A-R-R. -R. And I'll never forget that kid with third degree burns. I love car reviews, and you could say, hey, we're a little late to the party in terms of content, but I think it's kind of like deep down, we're content creators. That's how we started, right? It's almost like getting back to our roots a little bit. Like We have the uh, <laughs> student loan scars uh, from photography school to prove we knew what we were doing at one point, right? The truth is, Dealer Image Pro is a successful content company. We build our own proprietary technology to bring value to where dealers need it most. Our number one goal is to get more eyeballs on their inventory and save them time to market while doing it. However, now we believe it's a time to put a spotlight on Dealer Image Pro. It's time to nerd out on some cars and get back to being creative. How do we do that without boredom? I've been on every industry podcast in the country, and they all have one thing in common. Talk about their problems, talk about how great they are. It's the same old boring shit. Where's the story? Where's the entertainment? Where's the Joe Rogan? There's a hole to fill. And when there are holes to fill, there's an opportunity for success. In the upcoming months, we're going to produce a web series called GMs and Cars Getting Coffee. We're totally aware we're ripping off Jerry. Call it an homage, call it whatever you like, but we're gonna jump into the car with a general manager and other auto industry professionals. We're gonna talk about cars, their personal lives, whatever they wanna talk about. The purpose of this is not only to promote Dealer Image Pro, but to promote the auto industry. The auto industry in America employs just under 2 million people directly and over 8 million people in connected businesses like me. Our point is there are very few industries where an individual can come in, work their ass off from the ground up, and eventually run a multi-million dollar auto dealership. That is legit the American dream. There's a lot of amazing stories in dealerships, and ultimately we want to inspire the audience with the best stories the automotive industry has to offer. I feel like we nailed our first car review. Yeah, we'll see in post. I don't know, man. This thing's been giving me PTSD the whole time, if I'm honest with you. Hmm. Tell me. Reminds me of that time he backed that M5 into the concrete post. Ooh. Yes. After shooting 50 cars a day for like a week straight at BMW Beverly Hills. Lost the whole month's invoice. That was an expensive mistake. I'm so sorry. Kind of reminds me of this wine we're drinking. What is this? Where is this from, by the way? Maynard James Keenan, lead singer at Tool. Yeah. This is wine. Yeah, I don't know, man. It tastes, like, so. tastes like the inside of your Beamer. What is that? A hint of Crayola? Hey, what do they have a have a deal with Crayola? We're vegan now. We make our leather with crayons. All old beamers smell like Crayola crayons.